Recording? Good. Wall cabinets. This is the galley wall cabinet in Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter van. And this is a very simple 80-20 frame to comprise the wall cabinet. This is all it is. The key is in how you assemble it, how you design it, and how you mount it. I'll get into that in a different video. Right now, I just want to show you how I arrive at my dimensions to build this wall cabinet. In other words, how long do I know to make it coming away from the wall? And how do I get the measurement coming down from the ceiling so it makes a nice right angle that's parallel and plumb to the rest of the components in the van? I'm going to show you. Still recording? Good. What I did is I built a giant square. This is a 90 degree square, right? It's made out of 80-20. What else would I make it out of? A little pricey to do this, but I use this every day in all the vans. I got four vans going, three vans. I got three vans going right now. So that's my square. It's on the floor. In a van, nothing is square, nothing is level, plumb, you can't plumb. You can't use a level because that's not, has no relation to the van, which is off level. So the two things we do in a van when we begin a build is we measure left to right in the front, we measure left to right in the back or east west, and we strike a center line. We find the center line right down the middle of the van. Now that becomes our constant. Whatever we're putting in the van, we measure off the center line. You don't measure from a wall. The wall measurement from here to the center line is different than it is from here to the center line. The vans taper, they do this, they do all crazy stuff. You know that. So here's how you work around that. The floor is our constant, okay? We want everything to be parallel and square to the floor. The countertop, parallel to the floor. The galley cabinet face, square to the floor. Same thing with this wall cabinet. This baby, in other words, we can't do that. We can't do that. It's gotta be parallel and square to the countertop and the floor. It's not easy to do. And if you watch some of these videos closely, the cabinets are out of whack. They're not, they're off kilter. They're not square. So here's what I do. I start with my back plate, okay? This is the basis for the cabinet. And what that's comprised of is a couple of 80-20 elbows. And I just put a little, little plate in the back, a little one inch plate. It's screwed in and I hang that plate over this lip. You are all familiar with the, with the lip. They're in all the vans, but they're a little different van to van. Uh, so I hang them on that lip, and when I get everybody where I want it to be, I can tighten down on that top screw, and it pinches. That back plate and the elbow pinches against this lip, and that baby's in. But the design allows for this to rock, so I can arrive at parallel, you'll see. So the next step is how far off the wall? How, how deep do we make this cabinet? So that would be this, this piece right here. Get in there, T-nut. So now we gotta arrive at this distance, okay? How deep do we make this wall cabinet off the wall? What I do, is I first arrive at my countertop and my galley base cabinet. That has a lot to do with where's the refrigerator and do we have room to get the refrigerator out to the aisle and out of the van. So you got that measurement, you got your aisle, and then you have your galley. So that's basically you're talking about, it's not actually thirds because your refrigerator box is a lot deeper than your galley box will be. But whatever that galley box is gonna be and your countertop, comes across belly up to that countertop. I usually make the wall cabinet two to four inches shy of that countertop distance.
because if you belly up, uh, you know, you don't know how that's going to work. Get yourself a piece of cardboard, for instance, belly up to the countertop and bring that cardboard out to where you're going to feel comfortable at eye level. Because in the van, the wall cabinets are much lower than they would be in a, in a residential situation. Insulate. So you would decide where you're willing to bump your head on that cabinet while you're prepping your food. Like I said, I'll go two to four inches short. Uh, and it is lower. Now, you've got that, that measurement. How do we know how tall to make this? If we make it too short, the cabinet's gonna go uphill. If we make it too long, the cabinet's gonna go downhill. Everything's gonna fall out and hit you in the head. So, here's where the square comes in. So I'll bring this square up alongside the edge. Now the goal here is to make this parallel to the floor. Parallel to the floor, and then it would be square. So I take another square, a smaller square, see that? And I put that on my, how can a triangle be a square? This is why I never was good at math. Geometry I was good at, but uh, I still don't understand how a triangle could be a square. Anyway, here's what I do with this. I clamp my triangle to the square and I raise it up. We're flush on the floor, okay? So I know that this is 90 degrees from the floor, I'm square. And now I know that my triangle square is square to this square. So now I know, see this, this is now parallel to the floor. And as you can see, it lifted my, my main support back here up away from the van body. The next step would be to either put a wedge up in here or you drill an access hole and you put a T-nut and a screw on the other side. Are you still with me? Yes. And then you use that as a set screw so you would tighten that screw through the T-nut until it hits the van wall and locks this at that angle. Now you've tuned it, you've used a set screw. Now you can tighten down these big guys up here and it locks this thing in place. And believe me when I tell you, it pinches. You're not going anywhere with this. Now, how do we arrive at this distance here? Well, we know that this is where it needs to be. So now, what do I have here? I've got 14 and 5 eighths, but wait a minute. Don't mount it to this bare cleat, the, the ceiling panel, because you're gonna have, yeah, you really can't see up there, can you? Let me raise you up a little bit. Hold on. We're going up. All right, sorry about that. I had to raise the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. This piece, when you're measuring, you need to take into account whatever type of ceiling that you're putting up because this galley cabinet gets mounted after the ceiling goes in. Now you're gonna have to provide support cleaning above the ceiling to accept the screws for this thing. But that's not what we're talking about here. So you need to put whatever dimension your ceiling is, put that up there and measure right out at the end where this is gonna go, 14 and 3 eighths. Because the other problem you have is the van ceilings are on a bow, right? So if you measure too far in on the bow, you're gonna come up short. So you've gotta make sure that you measure right out at the end of this piece where your upright's gonna go. And that's how you get it. The process for mounting the center strip supports for my tongue and groove ceiling is as follows. First, you have to drill out the existing holes to accept the size of your plus nut. In this case, 5 16ths. 
Next, you have to use automotive primer and spray your freshly drilled hole to seal up that exposed metal. Then you can apply your plus nut with your super fancy plus nut gun. You say riv nut, I say plus nut. Riv nut, plus nut. Riv nut, plus nut. What the hell is the difference? I'm gonna show you. This is a plus nut and this is a riv nut. A riv nut is basically just a threaded rivet. A plus nut is what's called pre-bulbed and it has slits in it. Riv nuts, plus nuts. So a riv nut will just mushroom in the back. And that's fine. That's a, that offers a very, very good grip, good hold. A plus nut, on the other hand, not only mushrooms, but because it's been pre-bulbed and slit, you get these four feet that break out and hold. So a plus nut may conceivably have more holding power. The whole need for a riv nut or a plus nut is when you have an area that you do not have access to the back to put a nut on the back of your bolt. If you can just get the bolt here and there's no way to get a nut on the back, you use these threaded rivets. And that's it. A much easier job than van number one where I was using a manual rivet gun. Alex and Ron did a hell of a job building the drawer boxes. This is half inch pre-finished maple. And these drawer boxes are now waiting for their drawer faces. This is Sam. This is going in the ProMaster. So Sam is getting walnut drawer faces. And Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter's galleys is back there. It's going in the Sprinter. They're getting a bird's eye maple on their base. Very pretty. These openings here are cabinet doors. And uh, you know what? Uh, we did double cabinet doors in the Pleasure Way. When we did the refit in there, Pleasure Way gives you one big door for your closet. And it's kind of cumbersome to swing it out into the aisle. You got to kind of get out of the way of it. Uh, so what we did is we sliced it and we gave you two thinner doors. It's nice. It looks nice and it's a lot easier to navigate and maneuver. So we might do that here. We might have two double doors or maybe one big one. Um, another thing, if you see these two rails right here, horizontal rails, this is all very intentional. You see these, these drawers end here and these drawers are one inch further back. Very deliberate. And the only reason we're doing that is to give you that break. And that little break in the plane gives you a sense of space in the van. If they were all flush, going right down the line, it's just a big box of drawers. So we give it a little break and it gives you a greater sense of space. It's a little detail that makes a big difference. It goes a long way. One inch, that's all. Oh, look at this sink. This is a beauty. Got a nice big sink going in here. These, these big sinks are taking over the industry, I gotta tell you. Some vans have two or more. What else? Handles? We got some really nice, fully stainless steel latch locking handles from the boating world. So that's gonna go over both of these. Uh, these drawer glides. Blum, they're hidden, Blum. Blum drawer glides are quite nice because they're very adjustable in uh, X, Y, and Z. Incredibly adjustable, uh, high quality stuff. They really are. In this case, they're soft clothes and we can adjust that soft clothes to take the latching. So you just have to do a nice little close and it'll latch on its own.
I gotta show you what's going on with the tongue and groove ceiling that's going in the Sprinter van. Come on. If you remember back when I was building van number one, I did a handmade tongue and groove ceiling. And part of that process was a strapping on the back that I call barrelizing. It was basically uh, gaffer's tape, cloth tape across the back of all of the tongue and groove slats, and I stapled it in place. And really my intention with that tape was just to hold it together as one panelized unit so I could install it in the ceiling of the van. Well, Alex had an idea to take that concept a step further. And what he did with the first panel uh, for Mr. and Mrs. Sprinter van is he cut some canvas. We got some painter's tarp canvas, which is heavy duty canvas. And he cut a sheet that fits the entire back of one of our tongue and groove panels. Now this is the bottom. Uh, hopefully it sticks. And it can be short too. Yeah. And look how nice this behaves. Tongue and groove. This is basically the concept for a timbre door. That's how you would make a timbre door. And in this case, the entire canvas backing has a lot more PSI strength than the strips of cloth tape. So now we're gonna get these babies panelized. These have two coats of primer sanded in between and they are like butter. So they were primed individually, one by one outside on a beautiful sunny day. Now they're gonna get assembled and glued in the back with their canvas, and then we're gonna spray the top coats. Nice.